Welcome to the finish line with So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and today on the finish line, I do want to finish this little table topper. Now on Facebook, I did post, what should I make with this fabric? And I did decide on a table topper. Four blocks and a border, and I was done. Now I do want to quilt this, and I want to quilt it from the back side. The reason is, is there's so many different colors on the front. I'd have to do different color markings in order to see it as I was quilting. But on the back, I only have one color. So in this case, I have a dark blue. I'm going to be able to use a white marking and be able to see it all. So I will be quilting this upside down and backwards. I do have another video on that if you do want to see more on how I quilt upside down and backwards. So today, I'm going to be using a stencil and a pouncer. But we do need to center our pattern, and I'm going to show you how. So the pattern is just four churn dash blocks and four corners. But because I'm marking the back, I will not be able to keep straight. So I have the stencil that I want to do, which is grapes, and I do want to have it straight. Now I could have it straight going in this direction or having it follow the edges. But regardless in the direction, I do want to maintain a straight line. So I need to put some markings on the front that I can feel from the back. And that's where pins with big heads are going to come in handy. So I'm going to be using these pins with balls on the end. And these I will be able to feel from the other side. So I'm going to put some key markings in. I'm going to take that pin and I'm going to put it right in the corner and I'm not worried where that point is going to come out. I do want that ball to come out in the area that I want. So I have that ball right in that corner. So I'll mark all four corners. Now I can put other markings. And in this case, I do want to mark the straight line. So I'll put some pins in these little corners. So I have pin heads going along that edge and I have the pin heads for the center. Depending on your pattern, you can put the pins throughout the quilt. But I want to start with that center line and go out in two different directions. Now I'm going to be able to turn this over. I can see the pins, but I'm ignoring the pins. I want to feel those little ball heads. I will be marking with a pouncer that's going to steam off, so I'm also going to use a marking pencil that will steam off. If I just rub along the top, there is my little dot. That's the ball from the other side. So just rub a piece of chalk or even a sliver of soap along the back, right where those pinheads are. So if you've done rows of pinheads, you're just going to be able to mark those rows. Now I can turn it over and take out those pins. Once those pins are removed, I'm going to be able to continue marking from the back. I can draw that straight line by joining up the dots. I now have all of the markings I need to start off with. I'm going to be using the stencil with grapes. So if I want, I can trace around that stencil or I can pounce around the stencil. But the great part is I know where to start my stencil. If I want, I can start it right in that center because I do have the center lines or I can start so that that line is going down. On stencils, we do have little registration marks. Those marks we're going to be able to match up, and I'm going to show you that as we move forward. But I'm also going to use those marks to center up this piece. So my line is going to come right in the edge of that registration mark. So I can see that line through that little registration mark. So I can start it on one side, start it in the middle, or the other side. I will be doing this an edge to edge, so I will be starting on the side. 
So I'm going to line up those registration marks starting at the edge. Stencils do have a little area where you can hang them up and I do take time to cover that hole with tape. I don't need that marking on my quilt, I just need it to hang up so I do cover it. So I have that first one lined up, I'm ready to pounce. There are many different types of pouncers and unlike the word we do not pounce the stencil, we comb the stencil. But what we need to do is load up the chalk pad by pouncing. So we're going to get all of that chalk that we've put inside. By removing that top, we were able to put chalk inside of this pouncer, close it up, and if it's the first time you're using this pouncer, you need to bang it so that the chalk inside fills up this pad. So this is the only time we're going to pounce. From here, we get to comb. Now I can just hold that end and just comb it. We do want to make sure we have some chalk in that registration mark. So I don't have chalk anywhere on the top of this. The chalk has gone through those little lines. So when I pick it up, I now have that mark. This registration hole will line up with that. So they do line up. So I can line up those registration marks. I can check and make sure this is straight and comb that pattern. Pick it up, move it, and continue. If you find the pattern is a little bit too light, we need to reload that pouncer. We do want a lot of powder right here on this end. Once the one line is done, I'm going to be able to do the second. And just comb away. Pick up and move. And just keep marking. So I'm going to mark the entire quilt back with the stencil and the pounce. Some marks are going to be darker than others, but as long as you can see them, that's all we're needing. Now I can bring this to the machine and quilt it. So I'm just going to follow the print and go from one edge to another. And I'm not worried about following those lines exactly. As a matter of fact, I will not be doing the veins in those grape leaves. But I'm going to do that whole row. I like not following those lines exactly. It makes it look more like a free motion quilting. The front of the quilt is underneath. So I do have to be careful that my edges do not fold down, but I will be stitching right off and I'll be trimming from this front side. When I finish that one row, I'm going to start on the next row. When all of the quilting is done, I will turn it so that I can see the right side. All of my quilting is done, but I do run a row stitching right along this edge. So the quilt front is all quilted. I do have that stitching around the edge to hold it on. There's no markings. That pattern is straight right down that center. So the next thing I need to do is steam off all of those markings. So I'm going to use just a regular iron and then with some steam and some heat you can see all of those markings are starting to disappear. The markings also will wash out and with those markings done 
it does look like we have free motioned it. It was easy to see. So now I can just steam off this back, trim it, and it'll be ready for the binding. So to speed up this quilt, I did use a fusible batting, a pre-made template, a pounce that steamed and irons off. I marked the quilt from behind and used the registrations of those pins with the little pin heads. And that way I could feel those markings and that started me going straight so I was able to keep it straight throughout the whole quilt. I do hope you give it a try and thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. I'm on Facebook, Instagram and I do have a newsletter all under So Very Easy. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.